all, welcome back to another episode of All Things Lathrop. I'm your host, uh, Paul Camarena. And today we have a, uh, a guest uh, that is very well known to the, to the city and the community of Lathrop, and certainly to the community at large. Um, a man who has given a lot, of, uh, a lot of his life, a lot of years of his life to community service, uh, both public service, um, whether it be the city council or the planning commission, um, to just uh, community service, uh, from helping veterans to helping really all families um, of, from all walks of life. And so um, without further ado, we want to welcome the one and only, um, I call him the man, the myth, and the legend, Benny Gatto. Benny, welcome to the show, and yeah, thanks for coming on the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, um, feel good to do what I can to help you out and See, see if we can, can excuse me, continue our uh, our history of uh, leisure. Yeah, exactly. And in touch on that, um, we started off uh, the podcast uh, for those of you that have been uh, tuning in. Um, on exactly that, the history of Lathrop, and um, I know uh, Mr. Gatto was um, unavailable at the time, and so we definitely wanted to capture as much um, additional history that we might not have. Uh, covered maybe some certain uh, pertinent details um, that uh, Benny has um, definitely in his lifetime, a lot of the artifacts, some of which you, you may see here on the table here in a few moments. Um, but they say if anyone knows the history of Lathrop, it's definitely Benny Gatto. Um, I guess you can call him the history wrapped up in one man. Um, and so with, uh, with that being said, we'll definitely uh, start out, uh, start with some questions on some history the history of Lathrop and definitely want to touch up on the history of how the Gatto family um, originally came to Lathrop and talk about some um, some items uh, pertinent to the city uh, of Lathrop and uh, go from there. So, um, yeah, I kind of want to dive in. So um, as it pertains to the history of the Gatto family, um, I know one, um, I guess, gold nugget for those of you who may not know, uh, Benny Gatto's father was actually around the time of the city's founder, uh, Mr. Leland Stanford, uh, who also founded Stanford University. Um, and so again, there's a lot of history, a lot of um, rich history um, wrapped up in the Gatto family. So if you could uh, take a few moments and maybe take us back, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Benny Gatto, and maybe touch on some things and how the Gatto family originally came to Lathrop and um, yeah, maybe give us some history on that, if you would. Okay, well, my my dad settled here in the in the eighteen late mid mid I would say eighteen uh, fifties, and uh, just started uh, becoming a landholder. He owned a lot of property in this area, right where we're we're sitting today uh, all the way down to uh, Mossdale and even uh, close to Tracy. And uh, so that was mainly his life in, in, uh, in when he settled here in Lathrop. And he became a uh, hotel owner. And uh, I was just showing Paul here the, some of the photographs that uh, we had of uh, the city at that time well it it was a town but the hotel and and the saloon was one of my dad's uh big uh purchases you might say and uh so he stayed with that until uh the hotel actually burned i was showing uh mm -hmm. paul uh, a picture of the where the hotel was and the whole street and the whole street actually burned down at that time. And uh, so he went from there back to farming at that time and raising uh, a few kids somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, uh, 12, 12 children that uh, him and my wife uh, had to do and raised them all here in, in the town of Lathrop. That's, I say town because back then it wasn't it wasn't an incorporated uh, city at that time, so yeah. it was called a town. So uh, 
from there on, he just uh, became, uh, like I said, a farmer and raising uh, our children and, uh, you know, uh, just lived his life uh, as retired and, you know, yeah, yeah. Hung, hung out, you might say. Yeah. Do you remember what the year was when he uh, first came here? About, I would say, 1850-something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because the wife and I went to the county. We always tried to find how he got here and if he came to uh, Ellis Island. Everybody knows about Ellis Island when the, uh, the people from different countries would, would come to uh, here. And uh, we went to San Joaquin County Records in, in Stockton. And uh, all they had was that he was naturalized in 1914. Got it. And uh, so we know that he came long before that. Gotcha. But back then they weren't too enthused about uh, where they were from or anything. Now, nowadays it's a little bit different. But uh, so he was here, and in, in, like I said, in the 1850s. Uh, late 1850s, early 60s, probably. That's when uh, Leland Stanford was uh, came through here and yeah, in yeah. Uh, his realm of, of the years. Yeah. So on that note, do you have any? Do you know or do you have any stories uh, on whether or not he had any interactions with Leland? Uh, according to yeah, and according to uh, the records, uh, I believe mm. some. Well, you'll find in here yeah. that, uh, yeah, and that's when he owned the hotel and uh, he would, the roundhouse it, uh, over on. Original uh, railroad, railroad tracks, the Y. Right, the Y, yeah, they used to call it the Y. Yeah. He, he went, he went uh, north to Sacramento, uh, <laughs> south to uh, uh, San Francisco. You know, you could go just about anywhere on on our tracks. Yeah. And uh, so he would, when the train would come in, that uh, Mr. Ch Sanford would uh, bring his train through here. And uh, so my dad would load up a horse and buggy, and he would, you know, this, this is stories that we never really authenticated, mm. but everybody says, yeah, the older folks that we came in contact with, the wife and I used to try to get information, yeah. would would say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Gatto would take his horse and buggy and and uh, take passengers up, I mean, uh, get passengers up off the train that Mr. Stanford would come, come through with yeah. and bring them back to his hotel and feed them. So uh, the word was that, yeah, uh, Mr. Stanford got mad, and he put boxcars across the tracks so my dad couldn't run his horse and buggy up there. Ah. So that was the interaction. You were taking business from him. Right, <laughs> taking business from him, true. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the story, I don't know if you uh, know the story of why, where Lathrop came in. Um, You're gonna get to that, or yeah. From what I from what I understand, uh, I know we covered this in the first episode, but from what I understand, in my research, basically, um, it was obviously through Leland Stanford, you know, a railroad tycoon mm -hmm. who basically brought rail from the Sierra all the way, you know, up here mm -hmm. and connected to the Bay Area, San Francisco. But um, my understanding um, is that Leland Stanford founded this town in honor of his wife, mm -hmm. um, Jane Elizabeth Lathrop. Mm -hmm. And that's where the city Lathrop came from. Yeah. Yeah. And originally he, he came to Stockton. Yeah. Brought, brought his yeah. game through yeah. Stockton. Stopped in Stockton and he was going to put his roundhouse there. Yep. I don't know if you're familiar with it, what, what a roundhouse is. Yeah. It's basically a Y where you can connect or disconnect and, you know, reroute your lines. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so he stopped in Stockton, and he he uh, asked the fathers of Stockton, uh, the city's council, like we yeah. have now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he wanted to build his roundhouse here. Yeah. 
And they all said, no, 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 no. We don't want your stinking railroad in yeah, Stockton. Yeah. And he said, fine. He says, I'll see the grass grow in the streets of Stockton. <laughs> Kicked him off that bed. So yeah. he came there, and it was just 10 miles from Stockton to Lathrop. Yeah. Okay. Well, at that time, the place was called Wilson Station. Yep. And Mr. Wilson was just kind of like a uh, railroad employee and checked the tracks out and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, Mr. Sanford got to Wilson Station here, and he looked around, and then that's when he turned to his wife, and he says, hmm. He says, I think uh, I'll rename this town here mm-hmm. at this gentleman. We're going to name it after you, Jane. And yeah. as you said, uh, Jane Elizabeth Lathrop. Yeah. And so that's where the name Lathrop came in yeah. for yeah. Uh, um, the, this this city, at the, well, town at that time. So, yeah. Uh, and it's been there ever since. Yeah, yeah, we definitely, yeah, yeah, I didn't mention that, but yeah, we definitely covered that as well. Mm-hmm. But that's, um, you know, Lathrop actually a lot of it has is, you know, obviously from Leland Stanford, um, and now Stanford University all the way in Palo Alto over there. Right. Um, but I think a lot of people don't realize Lathrop has some very rich history. Yeah. Um, you know, originally started out as, I guess you can say, a transit point via rail. Um, fortunately, Stockton capitulated and basically their loss became right. our gain. So um, thank you, Stockton, I guess you could say. Yeah. So, yeah, we definitely uh, became blessed as a result of someone else's um, uh, mistake. Yeah. Um, so, and, and the reason was uh, the reason for building Stanford University. You, you cover, Did you cover that? No. Well, no. their son, they had one child, and he was That's a, right. a, a boy. Yeah. And I think he was around 15 years old, Mm -hmm. and he contacted typhoid fever. That's right. And he passed. Back then, you know, they didn't have the the medicine and all of that like they do now. Right, right, right. So uh, he ended up passing away, and that's the reason that uh, Mr. Sanford uh, decided that he wanted a a hospital built to take care of yeah. The needs of people that got sick. So yeah. that's where Stanford uh, University came in. Yeah. Stanford Hospital. Yeah, no, that's good. I, I do remember reading that. I yeah. didn't mention that, but I do remember reading that. Right. Um, that's uh, that's pretty powerful in the sense that, you know, basically he saw a need. Yeah. Fortunately, it was through the dire situation of his own son. Oh, yeah, true. But um, I guess you could say through that, at least people going forward after that were yeah. able to, you know, be a benefit from his um hospital that he right so that's that's really good and you know he was the governor of california yep he knew that and uh the railroad spike that uh was supposed to have been the east and the west connection correct okay and was the golden spike was driven at uh promontory unit at utah utah yep and uh but what a lot of people don't know is that the last link mm-hmm. of the railroad is actually right here in Lathrop. Yeah, Mostel Bridge. Mostel Bridge, yeah. right. Yeah. That was the last link of the east-west connection. And a lot of yeah. people think, well, when they talk about uh, Utah, that was it. Well, yeah. no, it was right here in Lathrop. Yeah. So... Yeah, definitely another uh, another gold nugget. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, some good stuff. And if anybody's familiar with the railroad museum in Sacramento, I don't think I've been there. But. Okay, you need to go there, and because as you walk in, in into the museum itself, right there in front of you is is called Jupiter, mm. and that was uh, Mr. Stanford's. Uh, engine that's okay. what he went from town to town city to city whatever all over the place mm. w- with the union air uh, union pacific Cuba. railroad no uh, central pacific central pacific yeah yeah he owned the central pacific railroad so 
that were in this the Jupiter, the engine. Mm. Uh, they kept it and restored it, and it's part of the museum there. And it's an artifact, right there. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know. Like, um, I guess since you mentioned it, uh, I guess we'll briefly touch on that. Uh, Mossdale Bridge, obviously, was named after Captain William Sims Moss. Uh, we touched a little bit on that in terms of um, uh, Captain William Sims Moss coming over here. I mm -hmm. want to say it's from Illinois or uh, maybe it's Kentucky, Illinois. Yeah, somewhere. Um, in the basically, yeah. they came over here and then purchased the ferry uh -huh. with the Mossdale Bridge. Obviously, back in the day, used to open, right. and close to make way for ferries. Is there any yeah. uh, any additional information that you know of on uh, would, would you Moss? Would you be willing to guess how old that bridge is? I want to say it was originally built in what was it, eighteen sixty nine? Well, that that was the original one, but yeah, yeah. But the one that's there now, that was, is actually a drawbridge. Yeah, it was nineteen twenty seven. Wow, that yeah. that bridge is is scheduled to be replaced. Uh, the city put in for it. Many years ago, uh, mm. right after we became a city, so <laughs> it's it's amazing to think, yeah, that still works, <laughs> still work, absolutely, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, the old Marsdale Bridge, and uh, it's just uh, uh, great that uh, yeah we still have something. It's a that, that it, ties to you know the history, yeah, right. No, I definitely love, uh, you know, those, I guess, the drawbridge, part, right. the Twin Towers, I guess yeah, you say. Yeah, That's definitely um, um, very monumental and definitely catches your eye as you as you drive down with yeah. the 205 and, you know, on the, onto the 5 or the 120 even. Right. And you've seen the city of Lake Tup, that's really our icon, yeah. if you will. There's um, another story on that bridge, too. Now, this, yeah. now I'm, I'm jumping from the... Uh, Road bridge over to the railroad bridge. Yeah. And if you, you seen up at the top where there's been graffiti up there? Yes. Okay, we had a gentleman that used to go up after they'd graffiti it. He'd climb up there and paint it out. And that happened two or three times or four times with him. And he said, Okay. Got tired of it. Enough's enough. Yeah. He got tired of climbing. And so that. <laughs> I, I I think the wording on there was K L G O or something like that. Mm. I don't know uh, what it meant, but uh, that that's been there for over probably a hundred years. Oh, yeah. some ancient graffiti. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, so. <clears throat> what what was life, uh, if you can recall, uh, you know, as, as a child growing up in Lathrop? Mm -hmm. um, you know, as we were speaking, uh, talking before. Uh, before the interview started, you mm -hmm. know, basically, uh, you know, when I, when my family came here, like I said, 1989, mm -hmm. everything west of I-5 was all farmlands. Right. And, you know, those of you that may live in River Islands or even Mostel, that mm -hmm. was all farmland and even parts of uh, what we call historic Lathrop, mm -hmm. everything east of Lathrop was still pretty rural in that right. sense. Right, right. Um, what was, what was uh, growing up in Lathrop like for you? Uh, do you remember as a child growing up? Well, there wasn't too much to do, you know. <laughs> like yeah. you said, it was an old farm town, but uh, as kids would have it, you you know, you'd do what you could do, go to the store and get a nickel candy or penny candy or, you know. Uh, <clears throat> and I think that's probably why it, as soon as I could, I uh, decided, well, I think I need to move on. Mm -hmm. and uh, joined the uh, U.S. Navy. Got it. And uh, put in nine years of my life yeah. given to the service of my country. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, like you said, there uh, really wasn't that much to do. It was just mostly all farm farmhouses, yeah. you know, not like, like we have now or, you know, uh, just an old farmhouse, and that's the way you lived then, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, 
growing up, uh, like I said, wasn't that much to do, you know. So you left, like you said, uh, to join the Navy mm -hmm. and then uh, came back from what I understand. Um, yeah, what was the reason that you came back to Lake Throat? Well, I, <clears throat> well, at first they, they sent me aboard ship during the Korean War. And uh, when I was gone for nine months, my daughter had been born in Hawaii uh, in 19, uh, in fact, her birthday is coming up, mm. uh, January 23rd. Uh, and I was gone for nine months, came back, and the ship came in at uh, Alameda. Okay, okay, you know where Alameda yep. is. And I came off the ship, my brother and and her and my daughter, she was nine, one, nine months old at that time. Yeah. Because, uh, or eight months, yeah. I was gone nine months, so she was, so I came off the ship and I wanted to give her a big hug, me and she had seen me, and she just screamed bloody murder, you know. <laughs> Mom, who's this guy? Get him out of here. <laughs> so yeah. I went ahead and, and made the second cruise and came back and then my son was born during that time mm. and kind of almost encountered the same problem, you know, with my son. Got it. So I asked the uh, dispersing officer at that time, uh, he's a lieutenant in the Navy, I said, how about giving me some shore duty where I could be with next to my family? Yeah, yeah. Navy is a little bit different the Army and the Marines and you know, cup. once you got stationed aboard ship, that was your home. Got it. Where Army and Marines, you moved around on the, the groundworks. So uh, I asked him if, uh, you know, he'd give me some shore duty, and he said, nah. He said, sailor, you're, you, you have a seagoing rate. Mm. And I said, well, my seagoing rate is with my family. Yeah. So I just opted out at that time. That was uh, 1956, yeah. Uh, I was in the Korean War, yeah, so 1956. So from then on, I just, uh, I told the wife, I said, well, I guess I'm not gonna depend on the government anymore. I guess I better get out and look for a job. Yeah. So. I put in for, at that time, a Sharps Army Depot. Or was Got it. it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they said, no, well, they were still scaling down from the, the war. No, uh, we really don't have anything for you. And I said, well, okay. So then I walked down the street here and went to work for, uh, at that time, was Best Fertilizer. Best Fertilizer, yeah. And, uh, yeah. It ended up Occidental Chemical and then Simplot. Uh, jail or Simplot, yeah. 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 And so, yeah, immediately they put me to work and I was sweeping floors and everything like that. And I told the wife, I said, well, you know, job's a job. I'll, I'll look around and see if I can find a better one. Yeah. yeah. Well, within six months, the plant manager knocked on our door at the house and wanted to Talk to you, Mrs. Gatto, and you, Betty. Oh, okay. I guess I'm going to get fired. And uh, yeah. he says, uh, been noticing you, you, you're a good worker. And he says, uh, I'd like to make you a supervisor. Oh. And I almost fell out of the chair. I thought, <laughs> by God, I've only been here six months, and he wants to make me a supervisor. So... You were hard work, evidently. Yeah, apparently yeah. that's, yeah. you see something. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, from there on, I just became a, a supervisor in uh, production at that time mm -hmm. and then moved over later on into maintenance. So I was pretty well versed with the whole plant, you know. And uh, so yeah, I spent 30 years there at, uh, at uh, all three companies uh, best fertilizers and then Occidental Chemical, who had, had bought it uh, from Best Fertilizer. 
and uh, then the uh, GL Simplot. Got it, got it. So I retired from there at 30 years. I didn't get no big pension, but uh, a job was a job. And, yeah. You know, you saved every little penny you could at that time, and the wife did a little work here and there, and Canary worked. So we sat there and raised our two children and, and uh, uh, lived in that house. And you just pick it up there, yeah. you know. Uh, so your your wife was the link. The linkage from you coming back out of the Navy back to Lathrop right. was your wife, and your wife was still here in Lathrop. From what I understand, actually grew up very close to uh, the Gallo family. Yes. Yes. Okay, so that yeah. that was the reason why you came back to Lake Throat. Right, absolutely, it. yeah. Okay. And uh, speaking of that, she uh, she just recently passed in uh, June of last year. And we're sorry for all Yeah, that. thank you. Uh, she was just turning 90. She had uh, contacted cancer back in 97, 1997, and she beat it. But uh, you just uh, came back, came back with a vengeance. And, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah. A little a boost here. No, absolutely. But uh, hell, we've been we've been married for seven years, and uh, as I stated, had our two children and raised them, put them through school, and. So whatever, and uh, then they they raised uh, their children. And we ended up with uh, four grandchildren mm -hmm. and six great grandchildren. So we had a blessed life that way. So, yeah. but uh, that's a long that's a long um, yeah a long, long long life. Definitely many years. It is. Um, yeah. So they attest testimony to the rest of us who, uh, some of us younger ones who are mm -hmm. still um, growing up, so to say. Right. You know, I know my wife and I have uh, been married. We just celebrated our fifth year anniversary. So that's a drop in the bucket compared yeah. to you and your wife. So, <laughs> so yeah, definitely a huge congratulations. And again, you know, you. sorry for your loss. Yeah. Um, on that note, I know that, um, you know, Benny and Joyce Gatto, um, from what I understand, um, served a combined total of 70 years of a community service. So that's, um, we'll definitely touch on, on that in a, in, a, in a few moments, but that's, uh, you know, certainly a very long time, mm -hmm. uh, both, you know, um, you guys, um, being married that long, but also, um, giving to the community for that many years as well. That's a huge, um, gift if you, if you will, to the community mm -hmm. at large. So. Um, definitely want to say thank you to you and um, um, to your wife for that. That's a huge, um, a huge gift to us. So we definitely appreciate it. Yeah, and she was very instrumental in uh, the art show. I don't know if you touched on that in any previous talks and what, but uh, she started the art show in, in uh, the city. Right. And something like 30 years that she did it. And every year we would have uh, what they call the Mayor's Art Show, the uh, show of the artists that, in the area. And uh, at, at the end of the couple of weeks of showing the art mm -hmm. that uh, people would bring in, uh, then we'd have a reception and, and then make presentation of uh, uh, the uh, art, of, yeah. of the money that was... Are given to us by the artist uh, for showing their art. So she she did that for all these years and just loved to do it. And she painted herself. Uh, so it was it was a godsend for her to to do something like that, you know. Yeah. And ironically, I, I want to say that she is the last member of her immediate family, and I'm the last member of my immediate family. So, wow. there's a little history right there, you know, 
Yeah. That there was nine there was nine children in hers, her family, and like I stated, there was twelve in my Got it. My mom and my dad. You both had some pretty uh pretty large families. Yeah, right. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've I was uh privileged and honored to attend the well, at least my first um attending of the uh art what's show. your what your wife started, the uh the art yeah, the Lathar Mayor's art show. So there's definitely a lot of great pieces of art out there, you know, again, yeah. thanks to your wife and what she started uh, many years ago. And thankfully, uh, the state of Lathrop has continued to honor that and having the annual uh, Lathrop Mayor's Art Show every year. And so, um, you know, for those of you that may not have attended, it's definitely worth attending. There's a lot of great pieces Absolutely. of art out there that uh, really the community, our large artists all over the place yeah. uh, contribute their pieces. And so, True. Uh, yeah, it's really cool to attend. Yeah. Thank you. So, Thank you. yeah, those kind words. Absolutely. Um, uh, Want to touch on another topic, and that's um, moving on from the you know the history of Lathrop into um, Lathrop becoming incorporated. I know mm -hmm. Lathrop, um, you know, essentially moved from a town to an official municipality in 1989. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who don't know it, Benigato is actually one of the original five, um, as they say, of the first uh, Lathrop City yeah. Council. Um, he was not the first, but the second mayor that was mm -hmm. elected, and he was also elected twice, um, serving a number a number of years in the city council. Mm -hmm. um, uh, becoming incorporated obviously um, allows obviously a town to become an official uh, city slash mm -hmm. municipality, giving it. Um, powers to levy taxes and whatnot and um, hold a lot of rules and powers that uh, it had not been able to prior to become incorporated. Um, what was the environment like um, that made possible the vote to happen even in the first place? Well, I, I believe uh, Paul was, uh, <clears throat> people were, I hate to say it, but Get fed up with the county dumping on us. Got it. You know, we had a what they call the advisory commission mm -hmm. that was appointed by the county, and as us citizens would meet and say, "Okay, we need this, we need that," we'd pass it on to the county and supposedly get something done, but a lot of it never happened. Got it. Uh, they were concerned about Stockton and other places, and for, let's let's just forget later at this time. So, so we got left to the back burner. So we got left to the back burner, and gotcha. so it was just to the point where, <clears throat> excuse me, people were fed up and said, "Okay, let's pursue incorporation." Got it, and that's. That's where it came um, came up uh, about incorporating the city. Had there been some time? I know, again, you know, <coughs> uh, you guys voted, you know, you'd be part of the uh, first yeah. Arizona five of the city council. Um, had it, had the topic of becoming incorporated, had, had it come up prior to 1989, or was this the first time and it just passed? And no, it, it, it was, a, like you said, uh, wait a we were put on the back burner because we it was talked about for quite a while. Got it. Uh, and it was just that uh, we finally got enough people interested got it. to pursue it. Got it. You know, that was the thing before was we didn't have the money. We didn't know what it was going to cost us, mm. uh, what we had to go through, you know, to get incorporation until we got enough smart heads up there that, yeah. that said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to meet here and we're going to meet here and we're going to meet here. And it just kept snowballing until we got all the paperwork done and put it, it. Put it out to vote. So literally from the, I guess you can call it a grassroots movement, basically. Right, right. Wow. Right. Um, and so obviously you were pretty instrumental in that and helping to push that through. Yeah, and it's kind of odd because uh, 
to begin with, I was, you know, do we want an incorporation or not? You know, uh, what what's what's going to happen if we we really do incorporate? And, but once I got involved pretty heavily into it, then yeah. I figured it out. Yeah, we need incorporation. Yeah, you know. And I know we're certainly grateful for that, you know, because obviously in so many terms and so many ways, you can basically sort of make your own rules and carve your own shots as an official municipality. Yeah. So, yeah. And and the thing is, Paul, was that uh, the five of us that finally got elected, Yeah. I think it was 19 of us that ran once everybody decided we was going to become a city. And out of the 19, I wasn't really wanting to be a politician, but uh, all the senior folks at that time, which I was part of, I was in my 50s then uh, when we incorporated. And uh, they kept saying, you got, you got to get on there and on that city council and, and protect us. And I said, what do you mean protect you? Well... You know, us old folks, we've been here all these years and nobody's ever, you know, got behind us and mm. and said, we know you and we we want you to run. And I said, well, okay. Huh. So I did. I think I put out two signs and hand-painted that uh, one of my neighbors down the street yeah. uh, painted for me and we stuck it in the ground. I got the fifth seat. Well, it was ironic that all five of us uh, ran and, and got elected, and it was July of 1989, and so uh, when it was in the middle of, of a term, mm -hmm. so in, when our term was up, three and a half years, we all got our heads together and says, geez, uh, that wasn't too bad. Maybe, maybe we ought to run again. <laughs> so we did. All yeah. five of us ran again and got reelected. Wow. So we thought, well, geez, I guess you know, we must have did something right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it was uh, pretty hectic if anybody has ever got involved in uh, starting the city or working any political uh, ramifications that yeah. you would, you don't know until you really get into it. You yeah. Know, what it entails. Right, right. And, uh, you know, we didn't know if we, did, we had a dollar coming from the county because we were all under county rule at that time. And here we, we didn't have no police, uh, you know, no uh Maintenance people, uh, I mean, we were pulling our hair out, and we had to hire a uh, a uh, city manager, you know. So we went to the books and found that, you know, there was retired city managers that will step in and help you out. And we got lucky and, and got a good one that uh, worked with the county to, to get us all set up on the— you literally helped to put it all together from the ground up. Yeah, and and that's what I'm saying that uh, it was uh, it was kind of a nightmare because you didn't know, like I said, you, if you had a penny or if you had ten dollars in your in your bank. Yeah, and uh, so, but I think it was good because we all learned in a different manner because uh, you know a couple of us, myself and Mr. Sangalang, uh, were the two oldest. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we kind of leaned toward that end where, and then between uh, Darlene and, and uh, Steve McKee mm -hmm. uh, were younger, so they could go kind of in the, uh, the other direction to uh, pick up the young folks. Yeah, you know? right, right, right. So, and a little more education as far as politics go. But, uh, uh, yeah, it... Uh, it was very interesting, very interesting. Well, it's definitely, a, it's a lot of history and a lot of experience, mm -hmm. obviously, in, in what you did. So that's, um, 
I guess it's no wonder why they say, uh, if anybody knows Lathrop, it's definitely Benny's. <laughs> That's a, that's a lot of good stuff. It's a lot of experience. Thank you. Um, moving from uh, Lathrop becoming incorporated to um, an official city slash municipality, um, a lot of people today uh, know the River Islands development. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember um, in one of our first episodes talking to Susan Daloso, um, she had mentioned, you know, uh, the original, well, what we call today rip as River Islands, mm -hmm was originally the concept of a theme park known mm -hmm. as Gold Rush City. Right. Um, and she had mentioned that you were very instrumental in helping to get, uh, I believe it was Measure D, mm. passed in the year 2000, which basically um, changed the theme from a Gold Rush, gold rush uh, mm -hmm. um, theme park to allowing uh, housing development. Mm -hmm. um, are you able to speak to that? What was that like? And I, I know I was looking at some of the numbers of what it passed. I think it passed by uh, somewhere on the order of like 11 percent. Uh, it feels like 55 to 44 uh, percent that voted um, in favor of changing the theme to uh, from a theme park to housing development. What was that like? And, and maybe if you could speak on to that a little bit. Well, I think, you know, every, everybody, well, everybody, a lot of the people were, were against it. Uh, and behind the scenes, there was a lot of uh, politics going on that, uh, yeah, yeah, a theme park would be great, but uh, come to the point where there just wasn't enough play out there uh, money-wise because everybody knew that a theme park was going to be lots and lots of money. Hmm. And, of course, then we had enough people in neighboring areas, Manteca, Stockton, everybody was kind of throwing their two cents in saying, nah, your theme park's not going to. And a lot, quite a bit of money was spent hmm. uh, trying to develop a theme, theme park, but uh, I had kind of reservations about it, but I thought, well, if the developers can pull it off, yeah, let's go for it. Well, right. it finally came to the point where, you know, having beatings and people bad mouth in the end, you know, uh, I had to run one meeting one night at, at our uh, business park over here, mm -hmm. and that place was just packed, and and people talked for hours. You know, you can't do this, you can't do that, and finally come to the point where I, I should, maybe. So maybe. It was a, there was a lot of opposition. A lot, lot of opposition, yeah. yeah. And so uh, I think is, and, and we were at that same city council, mm -hmm. and I think we all decided that, hey, it's, it's not going to work. So we went back with the, the development community and uh, Susan, uh, Deloso and, and her bunch, uh, uh, Mr. Chapman, and uh, changed the position of how we're going to develop this, you know. So then I, I believe it was Measure S that we put out that changed it from a theme park to uh, housing. Got it, got it. And uh, that kind of took the pressure off of us. But still... At that time, there was still enough opposition out there <clears throat> that uh, they were going to. Everybody knew we were going to build eleven thousand homes over here. Got it. Yeah, eleven thousand homes. My gosh, ever people just went bananas. <laughs> you know, hopefully for good. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, we lucked out because of the development community at that time. Mr. Chapman, Susan Deloso and her bunch, uh, they had built uh, Doherty Valley over in the Bay Area. Yes, Cyber Moon, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. you're familiar with that. Yeah. And it took them something like 18 years or something to get that development out. Hmm. It took us almost 20 years to get this one going. Yeah. I know when I was talking to her and um, before in one of our previous uh, interviews with her, um, it definitely took 
um, as the way I looked at a lot of determination and a lot of grit to really right. uh, pursue it and keep going in spite of the opposition. And, you know, thank God it, yeah. it was and, you know, continues to be uh, successful, definitely a very, to a very large degree. Right. Um, you know, I think I want to say I've heard, well, the numbers change, you know, depending on the, mm -hmm. um, I guess, the market, so to speak. I think they sell somewhere between four and sometimes 10 homes a week. Yeah. So it's, um, that's been a, a huge success, huge success. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that, uh, the perseverance that, that, uh, River Island's, uh, Cambay, yep. Cambay group is Mr. Chapman that stuck behind everything that they put out. I went to Sacramento with Susan and Ramon and uh, yeah. uh, two or three times and to see uh, the fight that they had to, to put up oh, right, just right. to get maybe one permit to, they, they spent somewhere in the neighborhood of $20 million to reinforce the levy. And that was just, I mean, mind-boggling because yeah, yeah. Uh, it didn't make any difference what, what they had to do. It was going to cost them this many million, this many million. Yeah. They had spent in the neighborhood of $220 million, I believe it was, uh, just to start the project. Just yeah. put a shovel of dirt in the ground. Uh, and like I said, that I think with the perseverance of uh, of them still wanting to do it, yeah. kind of speared the head, the head of uh, uh, our council mm -hmm. to really get behind them. Yeah, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of risk, a lot exactly. of capital, a lot of upfront capital. I know that she said, um, I think I want to say, you know, besides the reinforcing mm -hmm. of the, uh, what are called now super levies, mm -hmm. but basically built a right. levy adjacent to the existing one, the backfield in between. Now you have like 300 foot wide super yeah. levy. Um, the bridge that they had to to build before a house was even built, I want to mm -hmm. say she mentioned uh, they spent about 20 million just on that bridge alone. So exactly. They've definitely, there was yeah. a whole lot of risk that was invested in, you know, thank God it, it was and continues to be successful. So, yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, from what you mentioned, you basically were very instrumental in even going to help that um, that cause, so mm -hmm. to speak, uh, get passed through any hurdles that needed to be yeah. uh, legislation-wise and politically. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. That's a huge that's a huge win, definitely for our city. Yeah, and and you know, you had to you either had to get behind them or tell them to leave town. And yeah. uh, we knew that leaving town wasn't going to be the answer. Yeah. And we just had to sit down with them and with their group. They they had the money to, to move forward, so let's do it. Let's, let's you know. And yeah. I think that was the success of the city and the council, uh, all everybody working together, Yeah, you, you know. <clears throat> well, they definitely exuded a lot of patience themselves as well, you know, kind of holding mm -hmm. on and, you know, still pushing along. So. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> one of the other things I wanted to uh, uh, touch up on, uh, we sort of talked about a little bit before uh, we started the show today, and that is, um, well, one of the things I wanted to sort of mention before we get into that um, as a pretext, so to speak, um, when I was doing a little more research on yourself, Mm -hmm. Um, there's literally, for those who don't know how, uh, famous or popular that being in God is, there's literally like over 300 articles in the Man Manteca Bulletin alone that are written, um, on Benny God, or at least mention his name. So, um, again, there's a lot of history in Benny God that, you know, sits here before us today. Um, having said that, one of the articles mentioned, uh, that you were very instrumental in helping the city to develop a central water system. Um, I know we touched a lot, a little bit that, um, off, you know, off, offline. Um, but would you be able to take a couple minutes and kind of speak to that? And I know you mentioned, uh, how the well system 
Um, yeah, maybe just take a few minutes and speak to that if you would. Yeah, and uh, everybody knew that back then, uh, <clears throat> your drinking water was done by, <clears throat> excuse me, by a, a well. You had a well. Most everybody had a well on their property. Yeah. And uh, it got to the point where a lot of wells were failing and, you know, uh, people had to, uh, in fact, uh, the wife and I had to dig another well. Well, we didn't actually. Yeah, we did. I'll take it back. Hmm. Uh, we did dig another well after we'd moved in there because it was the one that we had was pretty old. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, then the county stepped in and formed what they called the LCWD, Lacey County Water District. And so they kind of took over the the water system, and uh, we had a, one water tank within the city, and that was at uh, Lathrop Road and I-5. So uh, that's where all our water went, to that uh, water tank. Wow. And then from there out to each household, the county went ahead and put in pipes and stuff out in the street, and then yeah, we'd hook up from out in the street to the, to the household. <clears throat> wow. And uh, as I mentioned to you when we were driving over, that uh, my brother and I uh, used to work weekends because we both had a little job here and there. Hmm. And we would work weekends and hook up water to the people's houses, and a lot of them, we didn't charge them any money because they were the old folks anyway and didn't have any money. So that was the formation of the Latham County Water District, and it was a, a system that, uh, like I said, uh, was under the county until, uh, and it stayed under the county for quite a number of years, even after we incorporated, until the point where uh, the water district says, and the county says, you guys take it over. We don't want nothing to do with it no more. So then it became part of the city uh, water system. And, of course, then, you know, uh, we had to go in and replace this pipe, that pipe, and uh, just just a lot of work. But... but <clears throat> We actually inherited the, excuse me, Blazup County Water District um, from the county. And uh, so that became the, the water system for Blazup. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> uh, it's, uh, that was, a, that was a, a, a real tussle there because, you know, uh, pipes were a little bit old and, yeah, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of that stuff just had to be started from scratch. And yeah, well, you literally helped the city of Lathrop, um, <clears throat> you know, go from a town to a city, and mm -hmm. then, like you were saying, you literally helped to dig the very trenches that the houses would mm -hmm. uh, get their water from. So yeah, that's pretty amazing. That's yeah. definitely uh, yeah. pretty amazing. All by hand, no <laughs> no machine. That's the best way, I guess. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, uh, talking, uh, 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 about your political life, I know, you know, mm -hmm. again, you were part of the original five on the very first city council to, um, being elected mayor twice. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some things, um, that you learned? Um, I know one of the comments that you made earlier that you thought it would be pretty difficult and, you know, after, um, one term, uh, being on the city council, um, it wasn't as bad as it seemed. What are some highlights that you could um, remember some huge accomplishments? Obviously, you know, we've already covered the, the major accomplishment, you know, that being uh, Lathar becoming incorporated. Mm -hmm. What are some accomplishments mm -hmm. that you can recall that you are um, most proud of? And, yeah, just maybe touch on some highlights in your political life on the city council and then also uh, behind uh, the mayor uh, position. Well, I think, uh, Paul, the... The best thing that I can think of is that it gave people a voice 
uh, you know, uh, they can throw rocks at us at, uh, uh, sitting up there and, uh, at the, um, the, the, Find the lectern. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we used to pack the chambers all the time, and mm. you know, and of course, people would <clears throat> would only would have their views too, and you know, uh, they would cry and holler and everything. And but I think the tenacity of of us five, yeah, uh, starting the city, knowing that <clears throat> we. Uh, had to keep moving to make it work. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't easy. I'll guarantee you it wasn't easy. And uh, in fact, there was one person that constantly would come to the meetings and point your finger at me and say, you need to be gone. And this went on and on and on, and finally he got to the point where <clears throat> I was ready to hang up my, my spurs, you might say, <laughs> and say, I'm, I've had enough of this politics. Yeah. But, but <clears throat> then I thought, I, why, why do that? Why give in to somebody that will take you down that you have started to become a nice city. Yeah. And my thought was, if we're gonna become a city, look around us and make sure that you don't make any mistakes that the other cities have. Yeah. That was my big hang up. And I would try my hardest with my wife, uh, she would be behind me 100 fold. Yeah, you, you need to do it this way or you don't need to do it that way. She was a big part of my, my life when it comes to politics. And, but I think that was the biggest highlight was that I and my colleagues, 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 yeah, yeah, uh, decided. No, we're going to stick it out, and we're going to push to make this a good city. I think that was the the biggest plus of my politi political career. Yeah, you know, and and listening to people, you know, and the beauty part of it was Paul was that all five of us had a chance to be mayor. Well, I I started the uh, rotation of of the mayor, and of course we didn't <coughs> excuse me we didn't have an election, you know, for mayor. It was just the uh, an appointment among us. So all five of us got a chance to be mayor, which I thought was great. Yeah, you know, because. <coughs> All five of us were different when it came to to act as mayor or go to meetings or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like I tried to tell the rest of the council was, hey, if you're invited to a dog show, go. Yeah. Because when you get there, they're going to announce your name and where you're from. Yeah. And I said... It doesn't make a difference that it was just a pony, a dog and pony show. Yeah. But they know that, oh, that person, that mayor is from Lathrop. Yeah. And I always stressed that to the rest of the, the council was, make sure you represent your city. Yeah. You know. That's good. That's good. And uh, so that and, and just keeping up with uh, things that, that went on, Paul, and <coughs> the daily uh, work and, you know, uh, helping my wife and my children uh, pursue their uh, antics or whatever they, they were into. And <coughs> as I said, my 
my wife would, she just loved that that art show, you know. Yeah. And uh, that was that was her thing that uh, she just loved to put that art show on uh, every year, you know. And it, it's become very successful, you know. Absolutely. The, the city has over, you know, five hundred pieces of art. But, uh, you know. Yeah, it's a lot. A lot of a lot yeah. of art. Um, on the topic of community service, um, you know, I was just making a, a list of bullet points. Uh, you've definitely contributed, you know, like we mentioned at the start of the podcast that there's, uh, you, both you and your wife have, have given to the community in a lot of different, um, a lot of different areas to, um, you know, really just mm -hmm. going down the list from the, uh, volunteer, you know, in the early days, yeah. you looked up as a firefighter volunteering your time on the Ma late the Manteca Fire District Board, uh, the Manteca District Fire Board. Also, I know that you're instrumental in putting up uh, the Lathrop Veterans Wall that we have at the mm -hmm. uh, Lathrop Valverde Park, um, also at the, uh, uh, the Lathrop Senior Center um, from volunteering on a monthly basis to being uh, one of the cooks over there, <laughs> uh, the food distribution programs that they offered. Um, even for the Stockton disabled veterans. Mm -hmm. um, and then also one thing that I've highlighted um, is you also lobbied for um, the creation of the high school, mm -hmm. first high school in the city of Lathrop. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, really the, the list goes on and on in terms of the amount of not only endeavors that you uh, gave uh, freely of your time and community service, um, and, you know, really just gave up your time, both you and your wife, in uh, the number of years and uh, different types of endeavors for community service. Um, what do you think is the core reason behind um, your efforts in community service? Obviously, that comes from something. I'm not sure if it comes from how you were raised as a child or something that you just had on the inside of you. What do you think that, that core reason is? Well, as I stated, I think uh, the biggest thing is is representation. Is is to know that at least you're out there trying to help people. Yeah, you know, and uh, I would always be try to be the first one to jump in there and say, "All right, let's let's go go this route and let's do this and let's do that," and. Uh, it it all boils back down to, you know, uh, my dad telling me that uh, when I went into high school and really didn't uh, <clears throat> wasn't too much of a schooly boy, but uh, my dad told me that, and I'll never forget, you either get a job or you go in the military. And I thought, well, hmm, job doesn't sound too good. <laughs> so I that's when I decided to go in the military. And I think between my dad and and the military taught me a lot. Hmm. You know. And and that's to be uh successful as you can with things that are handed down to you. You know. Yeah. People you know, I learned a lot, and my wife would would tell you the same thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. That we would confer with a lot of the the older folks in in Lacer, in town, in our town, yeah. in our city, because they had been there and done that. Yeah. You know, and so we got a lot of a lot of good information from from our older folks uh -huh. in the city, and I think. Both of us took that, and we ran with it, you know. And it <clears throat> just made us feel good because we knew that we we were out there helping people. Yeah. You know, and along with keeping our city moving forward, too. Yeah. You know. So. That's good. So representation, that's, yeah. that's really good. Exactly. That's a, that's a strong statement. That's, it is. That's, it is, that's yeah. powerful. Um, <clears throat> looking on uh, the Lathrop of today versus the Lathrop of the past, and then also, uh, you know, the becoming of Lathrop or the mm -hmm. future of Lathrop. Um, 
is the Lathrop of today what you envisioned it would be, um, you know, many years ago when just first starting out, even, you know, helping to uh, get Lathrop um, become an official municipality? Um, is it what you have, in, uh, what you envision it, it would become uh, looking now many years down the road? I, I think back then, uh, probably to the point where you would think, is this going to work? Hmm. Are, are, are we going in the right direction? And uh, I think a lot of that is because we were at the point where we had to move forward and take things as they came and try to make the changes as we go along for the good and the betterment of of the whole city. Uh, either that or step down and let somebody else take it. I shot at it. Yeah. You yeah. know. And I think it it came to that point after this the uh, second term that we all served, uh the said seven and a half years actually. And I felt that I did what I could do as a council member, a planning commissioner, uh, and everyone knew that at that time we didn't have a planning commission. Mm. We sat as our own planning commission, you know, for a year, a uh, little actually over a year. Mm. And I believe that that helped all five of us to continue on because we knew that hey, this is only part of becoming a city. Yeah. We we got to have uh, uh, the rest of these pieces yeah. in there to, to make this thing work. Hmm. And uh, so I think it, uh, that's, that was a driving force behind us, you know, or was behind me, I know. And I think Ben's at uh, the rest of the council felt the same way that we all decided to continue on with it, you know. So I think it, uh, you know, there's a plaque that uh, our first city manager that we hired, Mr. Bingham, he gave me when, when we retired, and, and it states on there, you know, that, and I'll never forget these words, he says, you, excuse me, you have laid the groundwork, you know, and goes on and on and on about it. But, but just those three or four words there, you have laid the groundwork. Oh. And I thought, oh, that sounds pretty good. You, know? <laughs> you definitely did, obviously, yeah. from everything that you did physically with your own hands, yeah. literally, uh, you know, sort of, so to speak, building mm -hmm. the trenches, literally taking water from the wells and connecting them to houses. That's, yeah. You literally laid the groundwork, mm -hmm. so uh, that's awesome. What are your what, do you, what would you say are some of your um, proudest moments as uh, of being a fellow Lathropian? Well, I I think incorporation would be one, you know. Uh, otherwise, if if we hadn't incorporated, had still been under county rule. Mm -hmm. uh, we wouldn't have the say that we have now, you know. Yeah. And I think that that is the biggest uh, step right there. Yeah. You know, um, getting the uh, River Islands off the ground, you know, 20 some years without putting a shovel of dirt in the ground, uh, you know, to start the project. Uh, just, and you're gonna, if you got a chance to talk to previous city managers and, and uh, different city people that yeah. uh, they were always saying, oh, by golly, here comes Benny again, <laughs> you know. But yeah. I would, you know, and and I know a lot, of, a lot of them would say, Benny, we can't do that. We can't. I, what do you mean you can't do it, you know? Um, why are we here if you can't do it? Yeah. You know, yeah. find a way, you know. And if you talk to, go well, talk to Rick. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, your planning boss. Yeah. Uh, and Rick will tell you that 
Yeah, I was always on on the, their case because uh, things weren't moving right, you know. Well, uh, it just just wasn't my nature. I, I I wanted to see it done and let's get it done. But yeah, but uh, the political wheels of uh, just don't move like that, you know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think incorporation and and uh, you know keeping things on the straight and narrow and and uh, making sure that it's done right and and uh, we're we're not hurting anybody. Yeah. So that would be my biggest uh, shows, I think. That's good, and we certainly thank you for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Opposite end, any regrets? I don't believe so. I, uh, okay. you know, there may be once or twice that I may have thought, eh, why did we do this, you know? Yeah, yeah. But in the end, it turned out to be, turned out to be good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, the city got funding like they were supposed to. We got, we got a lot of good uh, people that, that are running the show now, you know. Uh, city council seems to be uh, pulled together now, you know. Uh, I think commission works good. I love the planning commission, and I'm, I'm sure you do too. Yeah. You know, yeah. <clears throat> there's, there's a big step there to, to uh, go from council to... Uh, planning commission. I mean, yeah. commission to... Council. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh so and of course I I know I encourage you to continue your your play your uh quest in, in moving in that direction. I appreciate that. Uh I I feel you're you're kinda like me. You you wanna see things get done and get done in the right manner. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, and I'm sure your folks have instilled that into you. Yeah, definitely a lot of the hard uh, hard work and um, you know that you are speaking of too. I know for for me, my father was actually a, a farm worker early on mm -hmm. in his life, um, working for for his dad actually. Yeah. Um, and one benefit, one huge benefit that I definitely see from that is it instilled in him um, a very intense and hard. Um, um, working, mm -hmm. working attitude and, you know, just, um, just being able to do it no matter what is, um, in, in front of him. Right. And so it's because of that, you know, that I am who the person I am today is because mm -hmm. of my father. Um, and I'm certainly grateful for that as I'm sure you are as well. Yeah. Um, you know, um, at the end of the day, it's WRK and that's, you got to put a lot of work in and sometimes, uh, it takes work, but in the end it definitely pays off. Right. Just like it did, you know, for the city of Lathrop, mm -hmm. you, um, you know, amongst others, but yourself, yeah. you know, you got to put the work in. And so I definitely appreciate mm -hmm. that. I'm looking to the future of Lathrop. Um, what would you say that you look forward to for the city of Lathrop as it continues to become? Just to continue doing what we have been doing since incorporation. Uh, I think we're we're on the right direction. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people would say, uh, you, "You're growing too fast. You're growing," mm -hmm. but you have to grow with what's put in front of you. Yeah. If if you don't do it, cities around it are are going to do it. They're going to impact you more than what you can. Stop it. Not stop it, but at least sit down across the table and say, look, whatever you guys are doing and whatever we're doing is hurting both of us. So let's sit back and talk about this and see if we can resolve the issues ahead of us. Yeah. You know, and uh, that, that that's the biggest issue right now is is the growth, you know. And uh, I know that uh, sometimes I I sit there and think, 
by golly, can't we slow down a little bit, you know? <laughs> but it, it's not going to happen because, you know, I remember going to a uh, seminar one time and and uh, somebody in the audience asked the moderator, uh, uh, hey, how, how do you think it, we can uh, stop this growth? You know, is one of them. Well, I don't like this growth. How, how can we stop it? The moderator says, the only way you're going to stop it is stop having babies. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it. And I said, well, by golly, you're right, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. You just got to gotta do it and, and hope you're, you're doing the best, you know. And, you know, my son and daughter, they both uh, work. Uh, all my grandchildren, uh, that uh, they're good working people. And, mm -hmm. You know, uh, my son retired from the government, <clears throat> you know, corrections that, uh, after so many years, and you know, he he seen the political arena, and and uh, you know, uh, my grandson just retired, uh, Clint. You know, yeah. I was telling you about, and uh, here he is, just turned fifty, and he's uh, already retired. So, and I I just kept nurturing my kids and grandkids, and telling them, hey. Uh, do it, do it right, you know. Yeah, yeah. And if you got a problem, you can come to mom and dad. Let's let's see if we can resolve it. Yeah, that's good. Well, again, um, I want to thank you for your time for you know agreeing to come on the podcast today, as I'm sure a lot of our audience as well. Um, that's all I have. But is there any closing remarks or maybe anything, any topics that we hadn't covered that you'd like to address and maybe um, end this conversation off with today? No, I I thank you for the opportunity to. Uh, uh, I don't know how you would put it. Just, yeah, just to uh, uh, give my two cents, you know. Uh, and I'm I'm thankful for for you uh, doing this and getting the information out there, and I would uh, gladly see you continue on in your pursuit of uh, becoming pretty involved with the city, you know. Uh, you know, even I understand you might pursue a, another career or something, but, you know, uh, whatever you do, I, I, I want you to do your best. Sir. Uh, you know, uh, Keep up the good work and, and continue. If you, you got a problem, here's one of my things is, if you have a problem, sit down and discuss it with our staff. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> if it's the city manager, on down to our dog catcher, you know. Uh, yeah. Whatever it is, just ask him if he could take five minutes of their time and we'd like to discuss something yeah you know yeah. they'll think more of you doing that than than getting up at a, at a council meeting a planning commission meeting or yeah. something and you know uh <clears throat> bad mouthing them not bad mouthing but you know thinking well why wasn't it done this way well yeah. let's talk about it behind doors yeah you know and then when you come to the meeting you're all prepared. You know what, what what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that's the best way to resolve yeah. a conflict is, you know, really just taking the individual aside and talking to them in private and see if you exactly. can resolve those differences mm -hmm. right then and there with you and that person. And right. Obviously, if it's unresolved, then you can publicly address it. Right. Um, yeah, I agree. Well, and and with, uh, with the public out here, you know, they're your constituents. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're depending on you to uh, lead them down the right path, and, and, and that's it, you know. Yeah. And they're going to think more of you than uh, if you would just, hi, how are you doing? Turn around and walk away. Right, right. You know, once you engage a, a uh, dialect with them, a dialogue with them, and, uh, yeah. 
you know, let them know that you're there to help them. You yeah. Know? And if it's something that's bugging them, okay, well, let me check into it and I'll get back to you. That is one of the biggest things. Uh, yeah. Paul is when when you're speaking with somebody and you're at they're asking you, what can I do? Tell them you will get back to them. That's the big thing. Get back to them yeah. and say, okay, here's what I found out. You know, yeah. they're gonna think more of you than you just turn around walking away and say, I'll see you later. Right. Yeah. So. No, that's good. Um, engagement is key, like you said. So. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, again, thank you. Thank you for coming on to the podcast. Well, and, uh, thank you. Yeah. And if, if you guys have found um, value in this podcast, again, um, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. There will definitely be many more mm -hmm. um, podcasts. Uh, we have a few podcasts coming up. We're going to be um, sitting down with some local um, big businesses here in the city of Lathrop and also uh, interviewing some local officials as well. well um, and, and again, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode of All Things Lathrop. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.